Hello, Temple friends. Welcome to the very first edition of what I'm calling TempleCast 2020. By the way, I'm totally open to better names than that. Put your suggestions in the comments. This is the first of what I hope will be not many, but which I will suspect will be a fair few podcasts from me, Pastor Jim Gennati from Temple United Methodist Church. While we are complying with the guidelines issued by the White House during this pandemic crisis, I wanted to give us a chance to engage the scriptures together. So here's my plan. I'm going to make periodic recordings featuring the readings from that day in the lectionary. After that, I'll offer a brief comment on one of them, and then we'll conclude with a prayer. I'm not sure how often I'll be doing these, probably not every day. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. And then on Sundays, for however many Sundays we're under restriction and not able to meet at church for worship, I will post a short video of a devotional service led by my wife Joy and I. They won't be live streamed, at least that's not in the plans at the moment, but they will be recorded in the church. Watch for the first one of those this Sunday, that's March 22nd, 2020 by 10.30 a.m. So, here we go. The first reading for March 19th, 2020 is Psalm 23. If you want to follow along, I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our next reading for today is from the New Testament book of Ephesians. We are going to hear from chapter 4, verses 25 through 32. So then, putting away all falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Years ago, when I was working in student ministry, a friend of mine told me that his youth group had come up with a way to direct their conversations and interactions with each other toward grace and kindness, and most particularly, encouragement. He called it WOE, as in W-O-E. It's an acronym, meaning words of encouragement. WOE. You know how some groups have swear jars, where anyone who swears has to then put some money into the jar? Well, WOE is sort of like that without the jar, and hopefully without the swearing too, since this was supposed to be happening at a youth meeting. Whenever someone was overheard saying something that was unkind or ungracious about another person in the group, the overhearer would say, whoa. 
The whole woe principle comes from one of the verses in the Ephesians reading for today. Verse 29, which says, Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. I actually kind of prefer the New International Version's translation. It says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is suitable for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Paul is encouraging us to always encourage our brothers and sisters. Strive always to practice woe, words of encouragement. But the most interesting thing to me about that verse is the very last phrase, that it may benefit those who listen. So while we are speaking words of encouragement to build up and be gracious to our brothers and sisters, and while that practice also helps us to be more gracious and compassionate disciples, we're not the primary beneficiaries of woe, according to Paul. Other people, perhaps those who are outside the body of Christ, are always listening to how we speak to and treat each other. They're listening. Some of them are maybe looking for an excuse to dismiss Jesus from their lives. And often, the way we talk about and to each other in the church offers that excuse to those who are listening. But practicing woe in the church tells those who are outside of the church that the love of God in Christ does mean something, that we do take it seriously. I believe that our capacity for speaking woe is going to be seriously tested in these times of deep and prolonged uncertainty. Thankfully, we don't have to rely on ourselves for that capacity. As Christians, we have the sure promise of God in Christ to give us, by the Holy Spirit, all the capacity for speaking words of encouragement that we need, and then some. I was going to say, go out and speak some woe today, but we're not really supposed to go out, are we? Well, you can practice at home and also online. Definitely online. If you have comments or ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments. This will be your first opportunity to practice woe. Will you pray with me? I'm going to say a few phrases and leave a short pause for you to repeat them. I don't know if I'll always do it this way. We'll see how it goes. Let's pray. Lord of grace and good news. Please make me an instrument of both grace and good news today. Help me always and everywhere. And with everyone to speak W-O-E, words of encouragement. Thank you, God, for all that you are doing in my life, in the lives of those I love, and in the world. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, and amen. If you made it this far, thanks for listening to this first edition of TempleCast 2020. I'll be in touch again soon. Grace and peace to all.